You may or may not know this, but we have live office hours through 383 Design for those students who either do private tutoring or they register for one of our online classes. And this was a question that came up in a recent office hour session, and I thought it would be helpful for everyone. So let's talk about the selection tool, the bounty box, and Illustrator. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Mikkel Drew Pelham, a digital fashion specialist teaching digital fashion design and communication. If you like geeking out and learning about digital fashion software and design communication, this is the channel for you. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now, one of the first things we cover in the online Illustrator for Fashion Design Sketching course is the basic tools in Illustrator that you'll use over and over again for what we use the software for in fashion. But anyone who has ever used Illustrator knows that the selection tool is something you use all the time. And with that tool comes the bounding box. So what's the bounding box? If you've used Illustrator before, you've definitely seen this. Maybe you just didn't know what it was called, but it's that box that surrounds anything you select with the selection tool. And it goes to the boundaries of anything you've selected, hence the name bounding box. So if you select multiple objects on your page with the selection tool, it'll add a box around the outermost edges of all of the objects selected. One of the questions I got was, why do you sometimes see the box and other times you don't? Good question. One of the first things you need to remember about the bounding box is that you'll only see it if you select something with your black arrow, the selection tool. If you choose an object with direct selection or group selection, or you choose it with the selection tool and then switch to another tool, you will not see the bounding box. You have to be on the black arrow. The other question that was asked was about the purpose of the bounding box and how to use it. So the bounding box offers you a quick way to resize and rotate an object. To resize it, move the cursor to any corner of the bounding box. You'll see a diagonal double-sided arrow and click and drag to make your object bigger or smaller. Be sure to press and hold the shift key so that you can scale the object proportionally. To rotate your object, move the cursor slightly outside of a corner of the bounding box until the cursor changes to a rounded double-sided arrow. Click and start dragging to rotate the object. And again, hold the shift key if you wanna rotate the object at 45 degree angles. So this comes in really handy when you're sketching and in terms of productivity, it can definitely keep the flow of what you're doing. Instead of having to switch from the pen tool to the scale tool or the rotate tool, you can switch to the selection tool by pressing the letter V, or if the black arrow was the last selection tool you used, you can press and hold the command key on a Mac or control key on a Windows based computer, and that'll toggle from your current tool to the black arrow. Once you select your object, you can easily scale or rotate it. So for instance, one of the practice exercises for the online course is to draw Ms. Pac-Man. And of course, what distinguishes her from regular Pac-Man is the bow, which is just two triangle shapes and a rounded rectangle. Now, when you make the triangle, it's not going to be the exact size or the correct rotation you want. And that's when you can use the bounding box. And on a practical level, let's say you're adding belt loops to a pair of pants. I will normally use the rectangle tool, create the belt loops with stitches and bar tacks, group it, and then scale it down and put it on my flat sketch. And usually the belt loop needs to be rotated slightly so it feels like it's placed on the sketch correctly. So that's your bounding box. Simple to use, but really handy and great for improving your efficiency and productivity when you're using Illustrator for fashion design. Thanks for watching today's video. If you are new to Illustrator or you need to improve your productivity in Illustrator for fashion design, make sure you check out the links in the description to take my online course or for private tutoring. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you next time.